Welcome to r slash reddit revenge. This is a story of someone getting back at someone with revenge after being wronged. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel and for so many likes. The first story. My boss was a bad man and went to jail. The second story. Mechanic tried to cheat me for money. And the first story is Bully Boss Gets Owned. This one takes place back in 2002. I had been an over-the-road truck driver and engaged for a year. I thought I would try to get a local job so I could go home every night with my soon-to-be wife. The wedding was only a few months away. She lived in a pretty small town. There wasn't much in the way of local truck driving jobs, except for oil field or hauling dirt. I did find a dirt hauling company that was hiring. The supervisor was a P from the very beginning of the interview. He informed me that pay was $9 an hour and that's it. No raises, no benefits, even if you work there for over 20 years. Well, I decided to just go on and accept it, as I knew that after we got married, my wife would be moving back to her hometown to accept a job, and there were plenty of driving jobs there. My first day of work, the Super P has me fill out the paperwork and tries to force me to sign a waiver to decline workers' compensation should I get injured. He promised their insurance was far better, but I had already learned about many of those scams and refused to sign it. This utterly peeved him off. Telltale sign that they're trying to screw you, so I have to train with another driver for a week before getting assigned to my own truck, which is good so I can learn the routes and roads. I hear him tell the trainer to nitpick everything as he doesn't want me on the crew. Unfortunately for him, everything I do is to perfection. The only complaint the trainer had was I tended to ride the clutch a little hard when taking off on the first day. I was trying to get used to the extra heavy loads and very sensitive clutch. Otherwise, I floated gears like a 50-year pro vet. So, I finished the week and get assigned my own truck. I do my pre-trip safety inspection, as required by DOT regulations, and I noticed one of the steer tires is almost illegal wear. Cast of characters. Boss man. Boss or supervisor. Super P. Trainer. My trainer. Me. Engaged. Not so easy to push over dude. Me. Hey boss, unit 12 left steer is almost to regs. It's at 516. Boss man. Sounds to me like you just don't want to work. Me. No, it's legal for now. Just informing you that it's going to need to be replaced real soon. Boss man. Are you effing stupid? I just replaced both of those steers two months ago. Now get in the truck or clock out and go home. Me. I'll drive it until it's illegal or unsafe to do so. But if I get fined, I have enough witnesses here right now to put it right back on you. I got in the truck and went to work. Boss man was peeved. But two days later, I noticed a new set of steer tires during my daily inspection. The next week, boss man informs me that we're on nights for the next few days. Boss man. When on the ranch land, watch your speed. If you hit and kill one of the landowner's $45,000 prize winning steers that he makes $20,000 when breeding, I'll run your A off and you lose your pay. I bust out laughing hard. This peeves him off. Boss man. What the F you laughing at? You don't think I'm serious? Get your SH and get out. Me. Is that what the landowner told you? He breeds his prize winning steer for $20,000 a pop and you believed him? Boss man. Yeah. I was nearly on the ground laughing so hard. Boss man. The F's your problem. Fine. Go home. Me. Sorry. I meant no disrespect. It's just that I imagine that you're from up north, right? From the city? I could tell from day one from his fake southern accent, but I kept quiet about it. Boss man. Yeah, what of it? Me. Well, I'm a city boy as well, but even I know that a steer is a castrated bull. While it's true that a prize-winning steer can be worth tens of thousands of dollars, they cannot be bred. Ask anyone here, they'll confirm it. Trainer. Yes, sir, it's true. A steer is a bull with no balls. My trainer just happened to walk by when he heard me laughing so hard. Boss turned white. Don't matter. Watch your speed or you're down the road. The second week ends, and the third begins. About the third day, another truck breaks down, so the boss man decides to have me give my truck to the other driver and ride with my trainer again. For some reason, boss man decides he wants this to be my last day, but he can't due to no reason, so he makes something up, only to have it backfire on him. At the end of the day, he's waiting for us at the yard when we pull in and get parked. I head to the office to get my check for the first two weeks, and he's waiting for me outside. Boss man. You done effed up today, boy. You almost got someone killed. Me. Really? Please, do tell. Boss man. I received a call from a man who said that you cut him off and ran him off the road. He gave your truck and trailer numbers and identified you as the driver by the cap that you wear. Me. I smiled. Really? About what time did this incident happen? Boss man. Why are you smiling? You nearly killed a man. I'm letting you go right now. You're an unsafe driver. Me. No, first you need to answer my question. Boss man, what does it matter? I don't have to answer you, you're fired. Me, no, you do need to answer. Remember, there were two drivers in that truck today. Just then trainer walked up. 
And FYI, I know that I didn't cut off anyone today, as I did not drive at all. I can also vouch that Trainer did not cut anyone off, nor ran anyone off the road. So either, one, the guy misread the numbers of the truck and trailer and identity of the driver, two, is lying, or three, you're the one lying because you've been trying to find fault in everything I do and run me off since day one when I refused to sign the waiver for workman's comp. Boss man, F you, you little F. Trainer, he's right, I drove all day and don't recall any incidents or near misses. You know I'd have called as per policy. Boss man, well, all right, I guess you still have your job, but know I'm keeping a real close eye on you. Me, thank you and I don't doubt it. My butthole's already been feeling your nose hairs tickling it since day one. I opened my check and looked at it as boss man began to walk away fuming. Me, wait a minute, there's a $59 deduction on here for insurance. We don't have benefits, remember? Boss man, that's for the insurance against injury, remember? Me, you mean the one I declined and refused to waive the workers' comp for? Boss man, yeah, it's mandatory. Me, I see, so it's deducted whether I sign up for it or not. Boss man, yep, don't like it, don't let the door hit your A on the way out. Me, that's illegal. Boss man, no it ain't, now get the F off my property. I decided to end it right there, as there's no point in arguing with a spoiled child. It's best to be the better man and walk off. <laughs> yeah, right. Now for the pro revenge. It turns out that the captain for the Texas Department of Public Safety, Department of Transportation for you truck drivers, or a state trooper for everyone else, of the precinct just happened to live about four houses down from the apartments that my fiancé lived in. He just so happened to find an anonymous note on his windshield the next morning. The very next morning there were five state troopers with all 15 of the company's trucks pulled over on the side of the highway, right in front of the company, being thoroughly inspected. I was parked on the shoulder in my car across the highway, watching it all unfold, while sipping my coffee. Of the 15 trucks, 11 of them were shut down for safety violations. Thousands of dollars in fines were written, and the boss plus two other drivers were taken to jail for warrants. Boss also had an expired commercial driver's license. He was forced to drive, since I didn't show up for work that morning. As you can imagine, boss man lost his job. I had moved to my fiancé's hometown and got a job in the oil field driving tanker trucks. I heard the trainer got the boss man's job, and everyone lived happily ever after. Well, maybe not boss man, as he's also popped positive on a drug test. As far as to why I was a jackhole myself to boss man, I needed to let boss man know that I wasn't a pushover and that I wouldn't drink his Kool-Aid. I'm normally a nice guy, even to those who were jackholes to me. I was nice at first, until he pushed me too hard. I did tell my trainer that I was behind the state trooper attack and he thanked me. He told me that most of the other drivers wanted to thank me as well. Some were worried about the safety of the equipment, as they had been told off for reporting things as well. Many were brand new to truck driving and got their license through the company. They said that through me they learned that they did have rights and it was okay to stand up for them. They had been suspicious of the waiver but feared declining it. All but two immediately had pulled their workers' comp waivers and due to that, one driver was saved. She was involved in a bad accident about a month later and wound up on permanent disability. Had she stayed with the company's insurance, she would have been screwed as they did not offer long-term, let alone lifetime disability benefits and she had learned that most of her medical claims would have been denied. The next story is, my car is unsafe to drive and you can't release it to me? Enjoy your arrest. I'm a chick nursing student. I'm also 30, a military vet, army, and have always, always, always done 90% of the work on my vehicles. The only things I can't do are balance tires. I don't have the tools and some of the large work that requires things like cherry pickers and whatnot. Again, I don't have the tools. So like any good vehicle owner whose vehicle has sat for a long period of time without being driven, after getting back from a six-month mobilization that left my little Toyota SR5 truck sitting in dry storage, I went through and did maintenance. Checked and replaced my fan belts, air filters, spark plugs, oil and fuel filters, did an oil change and radiator flush, checked the battery and connections, checked my brake pads and alignment, swapped out my winter tires for summer tires, cleaned out my truck and replaced my winter survival gear with summer survival gear. Because yes, that is a priority where I lived, etc. Last but not least, I added injector treatment to my fuel tank, filled my tank, and took my truck to have the tires balanced by a Les Schwab tire place. Now, because of other errands I had, and because I had just spent six months in unpleasant sandy areas in uniform, I dressed up. Heels, dress slacks, silk blouse, well-tailored jacket, hair up in a bun. Dressed like that, I dropped my truck off, agreed that I needed the tires balanced and that was it, and was told that it would be about an hour. Awesome. I was about to walk off to go to my other errands down the block, when I noticed through that big glass window the Les Schwab places have that they were already pulling my truck into the bay, so I decided to wait. And being the interested person that I am, I watched as two guys started to pull my tires off my truck, and a third, the man who had taken my keys and agreed that I was only asking for my tires to be balanced, 
sat in the driver's seat jotting down notes on a little notepad. After about 10 minutes, the third guy with the notepad came back inside and walked over to me and explained that, during his free assessment of my vehicle, he found a lot of safety issues that needed to be corrected. Like what? I asked him. Well, it's like this, he responded, and then proceeded to rattle off a list of 10 or 12 items from his notepad that he had noticed in his free assessment. Fan belt needs replaced, overdue for oil change and radiator flush, fuel and oil filters are shot and have to be replaced, brake pads are shot and have to be replaced, alignment is totally out of whack and ruined my tires, which now have to be replaced instead of just balanced. Everything on his list were things I had just checked and or replaced. He ended with this. I'm really sorry, miss, but your vehicle's one big safety problem. I can't release it to you to drive in the condition it's currently in. Keep in mind, not only had I just done all this work, most of it on his list, but he had never once opened the hood of my truck. You can't look at the majority of what I have listed here, or that he had on his list without opening the hood of the vehicle. After a moment of consideration, I asked him how much he thought it would be to make it roadworthy. He screwed up his face and did some math in his little notebook. A rough estimate? 3700 But it could cost more, because your vehicle's technically an import, and the parts can be hard to find. I asked to speak with the manager, and was told the manager was out for the day. I then responded with, So, you're telling me that unless I get $3,700 worth of work done on my vehicle, you can't release my vehicle to me, the rightful owner, because it isn't safe or roadworthy? Yes. He continued on with this babble of apologies and explanations, in a sly, fakely apologetic condescending tone, and asked if there was anyone I could consult with about a repair this large, or if there was anyone who could give me a ride home. I asked him to give me a couple of minutes and walked out into the parking lot and got on my phone out of earshot from him or his mechanics, who were still balancing my tires, and promptly got off the phone with the sheriff's department. When I explained everything to the officer, he promised to be out in 15 minutes to help me clear the matter up. I walked back inside and told the mechanic, with the sweetest smile I could conjure, that I would have someone here presently to help me with the matter. I also asked him for the list of repairs needed, along with his quote, so I could discuss it with my friend who would be arriving shortly. He happily handed me the evidence to his arrest and even signed his name on it for me so that I could get in contact with him if I needed more than today to consider the repairs and costs. The cherry on top of the whole thing was the absent manager walked in just in time to see the employee get handcuffed and I got a free tire balance service because of what the now former employee tried to pull. Thank you for listening.